Now, as far as changing this little pump goes, um, honestly, this is the second time I recorded it. The first time the video file corrupted and it's gone. So this will be a bit abbreviated. Getting to it is fairly easy. It's not a bad part to change. The first thing you're gonna have to do is uh, take this engine cover off, which if you've never had yours off, it, you just lift up the front of it and it just pops right off. The next part is taking this engine support bar off the uh, middle here. And that's it there. Of course, this will go under that hose over there, and then this goes under the AC lines. Uh, no big deal. It is four bolts. Uh, they are 13 millimeter heads. You whiz that out of the way. You'll have to take off your uh, your hood release cable off of. I think there's we have three three attachment points on there, and then that's out of the way. And then before the the bar, I forgot this. You'll have to take off your your air intake ducts, um, and they're really easy. They just I just push up from under here and pop the front side off. And then back here, you just wiggle them up, up and down, left and right, pull a little bit, and they'll eventually just pop off, okay? Don't get crazy with them. You don't wanna have to buy these if you don't need to. If you wind up breaking those tabs because you got in a hurry, you'll be mad. So I'm sure those aren't as cheap as you'd like them to be. Once you have access to all that, the pump is actually right under here. Okay, where these two screws are is actually what holds the pump onto this bracket. So what I'm gonna try to do is just move this coolant reservoir, we'll just lean it back here against the radiator, and then see if that gets us en enough access to the bolts without taking a whole bunch of stuff off. Okay, so these bolts or these fasteners here have an 11 millimeter head on them. I don't know when's the last time I've seen an 11 mil anything so hopefully you don't have a, a skip size socket set and you've got the right stuff Get these things out of the way before they fall and we may wind up having to take that um, probably will that belly pan way down there Probably going to wind up having to take that loose, even if not to do this particular portion, but just to clean up some of the stuff I know is going to leak out at the end. Okay, so this has got us a little closer to the goal. In fact, there's the pump right down there. That's it, right there. Okay, so we need to get these T <laughs> bolts out and uh, loosen the lines, put the new lines on. And then put the lines on the new pump and uh, profit. I think I am going to sneak this off here because that seems really tight. See if we can drag that guy off without making too much of a mess. Okay, I got this line off. Had a few drips come out of it, nothing major. Uh, this over here is a T30 or a T, <clears throat> and you know, we're pretty close to end game here. I'm going to take this line loose from the intercooler. Uh, try to catch the coolant as I take that off, which hopefully, again, is not that much that comes out um, because you just simply don't have enough room here to work with. Like, Okay, so I just took that line off, backed it out, and had a little trickle going into, uh, you can see a few drips coming, uh, going into my daughter's Sunny D bottle, which is just small enough to get down there. All right, so this is what I caught out of that. There's not not a whole lot, but that would make uh, you can't really see. And that would make a huge mess if you just let it go down there. So if you can catch it somehow, catch it. So I've tried to do this repair without taking the uh, intercooler coolant tank out. And you know maybe you can if you want to fight everything, but I you know I'm not going to do that. What I do is I just drain this out by taking this hose off over here. And when you aim this down, when you aim that hose down, you get, well, there you saw some come out, you get the coolant that comes out of the bottom. Uh, get out as much as you can. Again, I use my daughter's Sunny D bottle. And then once you've done that, we're going to take, uh, there's one, one more BMW clip deal on the bottom, very bottom of this reservoir. So when you're trying to get that bottom line off of this little tank, this little reservoir, it's that one center frame with a purple stripe on it. 
there's just enough room if you get all these other lines loose you can move it out of the way and then use your little pick there with that hook end on it to get under that wire and then from there I'm gonna pull it off let things go where they go I guess I you hate to let coolant just drain but on this car you don't really have much of a choice just take that belly pan off it's 15 screws um, all of which stay in except for four on the front so it's not a big deal and then you can get a, a drain a drain pan under there it's like so and you're not making such a huge huge mess all right little coolant spill later uh, there she is all out and if you've done enough draining out of the pipe that goes on to here or the tube that goes on to here it's not it's not so bad it really isn't that terrible so now with that off you can fully see a little pump here that's died so uh, and there you can see the hose on the bottom that I couldn't show you before and I think what I'm going to do is probably this hose here, this one, it snakes all the way around up to here where you can see I've replaced um, the plastic fitting with a brass one. I think I'm probably just going to take it off of here. And then that way I can maybe avoid having whatever fluids in here spilling out. And I can transfer that over to the other pump. And here's the old. And here's the new. This is the Pierberg Wasser Umwalm pump. And walls pumpy pump. Uh, this is the actual BMW OEM pump. Um, this is a Gates, and this one hasn't been on this car too long. I don't know what's happened to it. Um, you saw the fault that I started with. I don't know something let go on the inside. This here's the difference. This is this one is a Gates from Rock Auto for 29 bucks, but then you pay tax and shipping, and it's probably around I don't know 40 bucks or so by the time you get it in your hands. This one from FCP Euro was $79.99 free shipping. Tax made it, I don't know, just a shade under 90. They both have lifetime warranty. Um, so, you know, that's not really a consideration here, but I'm gonna go back with OEM because now I've already had this one fail out for whatever reason. I don't wanna do this all the time, lifetime warranty or not. So I'm gonna transfer that hose onto here We'll pop that hose right there, staring up at us, leaking fluid, onto the bottom of this guy. Installation is the reverse removal. However, here's one thing that I'm gonna do, um, and I always try to do this with coolant systems if I can. Before I hook this tube back up here, and this is after I get uh, you know, everything else back on, Okay, I'm going to take a small funnel and I'm gonna fill that with coolant. That way our pump can get primed. Um, I don't want, when we start the car, I don't want it to go through and try to pump and cavitate and get overheated and all that stuff. And I, I don't know if you have to do it. I don't know what the tech data says, but I always do that with cooling systems if I can. Try to get out, rid of as much air as possible. I know that we have the sequence in here. You, turn the ignition on, press the gas pedal, it starts the other electric pump that's under that towel way down there. I know all that. Um, this just helps the process work a little bit better. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do next. All right, new pump is effectively on. Got this tightened down, got that, that booger down there tightened down. And don't forget your electrical connector right there. Push it until it clicks, and mine doesn't click very much but uh, it's enough and then try to pull it back off if it slides off you didn't get it locked in and you don't want to have to take all this stuff back apart just to get in there and find out it's a loose connector okay so from here uh, I'll go ahead and I'll install the bolts here throw our reservoir back on and start hooking the hoses up one at a time we'll put some coolant in it and see what we got all right, and now got everything back on. This pushed on, that thing pushed on, this clamped on. Of course, my pump is tight. Got those two bolts in, the two T30s. Oh, good thing I made this video. I forgot to put this guy on here. Now, you know, if I had been thinking about this, this would be a good time, a great time to replace this hose assembly, the entire thing. Uh, these hoses, it looks like three separate ones, but this is all one big part number. Uh, and it comes pre-assembled just like the way this one is here with a little plastic 
or you know fiberglass reinforced plastic deal uh, it was leaking on this particular deal when I had worked on the coolant system earlier so I just took that out and put this in this brass union and I wish I had remembered that these hoses were original I would just replace the whole thing but I forgot about it so no biggie but if you're doing this and it's never been replaced it's a good time to do it so I'll tighten this up and then I'm going to throw some antifreeze in here all right so I've just finished filling up my my hose here to try to prime up that pump so it's not pumping dry sneak that on there real quick and it doesn't take very much and we're going to slide that on there and then tighten it up fill up our reservoir see what happens okay so now i've got this tightened up i've got coolant in here too much i know you can probably see there i'm over the max but i know some of that's going to go down into the lines so now switch your ignition on turn your heat on maximum turn it on automatic lowest fan setting Depress the accelerator for 10 seconds. Okay. Now is when I let up, I'm hearing sounds. And I've got a jump pack hooked up to keep the battery going. And I hear stuff. Oh, and look at that. My coolant level has gone way down. You see that? Let's throw a little bit more in there. Okay, there we go. Bubbles and whizzing and whirring and things. This is the right way to do it. Don't skip this step. Don't just start it and get a whole bunch of air in your system. They have designed this process for a reason, so let's use it. I mean, you can see the coolant cycling its way through there. This is a pretty awesome process, actually. And it allows you to statically check for leaks that may have occurred while you were doing your your maintenance um, and it's always hard with coolant like everything's going to be wet where it dripped down when you unhooked all these hoses but you're looking for active leaks bubbles uh, you'd be looking for that kind of mess coming out not staying in your reservoir so it says it takes about 10 minutes 10 or 12 minutes or so for this to complete uh, I've done this a few times on this car and then uh, an E90 I had, and it's about, I don't think it took 12 minutes on any of them, but plan accordingly. Uh, make sure you got a little juice hooked up here, um, just to keep your battery up. Oh man, we kicked up a notch here. Awesome. And this goes without saying, anybody watching this, use the BMW stuff. Always use the BMW stuff. Don't take chances. It's not that expensive. If you Even if you buy it at the dealer, it's not that expensive. A little over, I think, $20 a gallon, $25, $28 a gallon. It's chump change in the end for a car like this. Just buy it. Get your gallon of distilled water, mix it 50-50. Uh, I ordered this from FCP Euro a few months ago, and... I want to say on there it's maybe 20 bucks a gallon delivered. You can't beat that. And antifreeze, unlike uh, you know brake fluid or something like that, you can open it and keep it. It lasts. It's no big deal. All right, we'll let this finish. So as per my other experiences with this procedure, it has been quite 10 minutes, but I don't hear it doing anything anymore. You don't see any action going on there. You might hear a humming, but that's up here. That's the blower motor and the ignition being on in general. So with that, I'm gonna call it done. Looks like the coolant's right where it needs to be. Uh, so I'm gonna take it for a drive. Let's see what happens. All right, let's see if we get the message. No more message. That's awesome. So at the risk of maybe having egg on my face, I'm pretty sure we got it fixed. Those little pumps just don't last all that long, especially if you go with the off-brand. Don't do it. Get the Pureberg, go to FCP Euro, buy it, lifetime warranty. 
it's worth the extra money and it's not all that much in the end anyway um, so when you're done with this always check for leaks check your coolant the first couple times you drive it make sure everything's where it, where it needs to be and then I'm going to show you how to make sure that little pump is actually running whether you get the error up here or not whether you have the code reader or not uh, it's real easy you take that engine cover off and you can hear a little buzzing and you can feel one of those hoses and I'll show you how to do that okay so it's the next day I've been driving it around got her up to operating temp and so now let's check and see if the little pump is pumping It's an easy check. Pop your hood. And you should hear a little buzz. And it should be coming from those two Torx bolts down there. Hear it? Now, if you put your finger lightly on this line, it will be hot. You should feel it vibrating. And that's that pump doing its thing cooling down your turbos after the engine's off keeping the oil that's in the turbos from becoming a gel that should run for a while uh, I believe somewhere around the order of 20 minutes or so so now that I know that's running let's go start up the car and see if we get the engine overheat light warning okay <laughs> That's it. No more. So good luck with that. Get a nice code reader that can do the uh, enhanced scans. And good luck with your repairs. Thank you for watching, and I will help if I can.